Welcome back to Who Chose. Today on Who Chose, we're going to go from this through to this. Uh, but first, I'm going to apologize for the peeping in the background. Uh, it's a bit of a zoo around here at the moment. So you've met Floki and Ragnar before, uh, but this is Radagast. Hello. <laughs> and these are our chickens. Uh, we're currently hatching chickens at the moment, obviously. And uh, so that, that's the sound you'll be hearing for most of the clip. <laughs> All right, let's get started. <laughs> so to begin with, I collected my seeds. I got them out of uh, a cos lettuce plant that I had in the ground and I let go to flower. So I just let the seeds dry on the flower, uh, then picked it, took it inside and added the seeds to the 50-50 propagation mix in our cheap alternative hydroponic seed propagation device. I just literally picked the seeds off the flower and uh, sprinkled them over the layer of vermiculite and perlite uh, and then covered it over with uh, more vermiculite and perlite. I then filled up the bottom tray of the propagator uh, and dunked in the 50-50 mix, letting it soak right through both the vermiculite and perlite, adding a little bit more water when necessary uh, just to get it fully soaked. And after it's fully soaked, you can then drain it off, empty the bottom tray, and then pop it in and the seeds are ready to start growing. And there we have a seed propagation device full of cos lettuce, and I'm pretty sure I've got cabbage in there as well. I added some cabbage seeds. So these are ready. These are the right size to transplant over into our Puck Propagation DWC system. Now, the moment that these seedlings showed their first true leaves is the moment that I added in half strength nutrient. So. If you're going to be propagating in a device like this, uh, just add in your half strength nutrient by filling your bottom reservoir with your nutrient, dunking them in, letting it soak into the vermiculite perlite mix, pulling it out, emptying the bottom res, and then after another few days a week, depending on how fast this media dries out, you can then move it to full strength nutrient, which means that these seedlings are actually hardened to full strength nutrient by the time we move them into our puck propagation DWC container. So now we're going to remove these seedlings from our cheap alternative device, move them into the pucks, and then into our propagation device. To get the seedlings out of the medium, we're just going to dunk it in some water and let the buoyancy of the perlite and the density of the vermiculite separate out uh, the mix and all the seedlings will just be floating in solution. Obviously, it'd be better if I had like a more appropriately sized container so I didn't waste water, but it depends on the propagation device you're using. So uh, let's separate them out. So I'll just go ahead and dunk these in and then let all that media separate. And then we can just move all these seedlings out of this container and over into another bowl where I can separate the media even more. All right, now that our media is separated, you can see how the perlite floats and the vermiculite just stays where it is. So uh, we can put this aside and 
uh, reuse it if we want it. Just make sure you don't uh, mechanically compress uh, the vermiculite in any way. Uh, you want to, while it's wet, you can damage the structure if you compress it. Uh, so just uh, let the vermiculite dry and then you can handle it. So now we're going to fill up our DWC puck propagator. So fill up your propagator with uh, your water. Now in previous uh, videos, I said to fill up the propagator to the brim. Now, since those videos, I have discovered that it's actually more productive if you fill it up about two inches underneath or one and a half inches underneath the seedlings uh, where they're dangling. So uh, underneath the lid essentially, and the seedlings roots will dangle into the surface of the water but most of the roots will be exposed. Uh, the reason we do this is because when we add our lid, um, we're going to also add in our air pump. Now, I highly recommend using an air pump. You're gonna get much more productivity out of this system. It's gonna be a lot faster. You can do it cracky style if you like, if you don't want or can't use an air pump because you don't have any electricity where you're propagating. Uh, and I recommend um, some fairly large air stones too. So uh, we'll attach the air stones onto our air pump and the spacing for the air stones should pretty much be uh, one in the right quarter and uh, one in the left quarter of the device um, so that you get an even dispersal. Um, what will happen then is as the air pumps turned on, we're going to have bubbles rising to the surface, which is going to cause micro splashes, uh, across, uh, the surface from where the bubbles pop. Um, and these are going to be completely randomized. So pretty much all of the roots above this device are going to get splashed. Now the roots uh, having the nutrients delivered to them in this fashion uh, is going to be a lot more productive uh, than if they were sitting uh, perpetually within a, an aerated solution. Uh, this is actually a kind of aeroponics, at least like spl splashponics. Anyway, this is going to help pull the roots out of the seedlings a lot faster. Now we're going to adjust the pH of our water before we put in our nutrient. Now, it may seem counterintuitive, but you will get an idea of how much your individual nutrient will raise the pH of your water per liter um, as you move through getting to know your nutrients and water source. I actually recommend adding a certain amount of nutrient into 10 liters of water and then observing the pH change so that you can pre-adjust your pH. Now, the reason we pre-adjust the pH is because if you adjust it after you put your nutrient into your solution, it will actually cause parts of the solution to have higher pHs and then your nutrient will actually precipitate out of your solution. So I know that per 20 liters of my water, I need two mils of pH up, my specific pH up, to raise the water to a pH where my nutrient will then drop the water back down once it's added into the pH balanced water. This ends up at about a pH of 6.5 by the time I've added in my pH adjustment and nutrient. I also know how much nutrient I need per 20 liters to get my water up to an EC of between 2.2 to 2.4. So I'll add in my pH adjustment and you can now see my water is a pH of 10.5. So I'll add in my nutrient Mix it up, check the EC. So that's at about 2.2 EC. And 6.4 pH.
Beautiful. So we'll just put on the lid and now we can start moving our seedlings into our system. So grab your puck. If you haven't seen the video on how to make this system, you can check it out here. And we can just grab our seedlings like this. Don't really need to worry about if there's any vermiculite and perlite as it's completely inert um, and there's no pumps in the system other than the air pump and it's external to the device. We can just throw the seedling into the pock and put the pock into our device. And there we go. That's how you set up a seedling slash cloning propagator. All right, I'm gonna go and put these guys under lights. Uh, the reason I put them under lights is so I can completely control the environment that they're in and the exact uh, amount of light that they get and the lighting cycle. But you can just put them outside uh, maybe in like, a not full sun area to start with and move them into full sun just to you know ease them into it you don't need to use lights uh, i just like the control they give me over the environment that the seedlings are in also if they're inside nothing can eat them <laughs> all right i hope you enjoyed this episode of who chose uh subscribe if you haven't already like the video like the video for the algorithm please like the video and I'll see you next time. Happy hydroponicking.